But first you're gonna warm up, start with the cane, the long side coming out of your thumb. Your hand is gonna be palm up in the crook, and you're gonna warm up with this forward spinning motion. This is just a warm up. This is not for self-defense, but it's very important that you condition your body for self-defense. So you're gonna condition the body, warm up, keep the body safe from injury by doing this basic spin. Now I brought the chair in so that you can see, you can also do this from a seated position. So anything you do with a cane, you can do standing. You can also do it seat, uh, seated, seating, <laughs> sitting. Losing my words here. From here, you're gonna come across the body and back. This cross the body and back is going to start to bring your heart rate up a little bit. You're gonna to start to sweat, hopefully. Just side to side. This is kind of like doing a slap across the face and then a backhand. Good afternoon, it's good to see you. Texan Rider. Texan Rider, it's nice to see you. I like to see who's here. Just going side to side, stomach up and in. Slow as smooth, smooth as fast. Take your time. Learn how to do the motion well. And again, you can do this standing, standing or sitting. We're going to have a hard time with that one the whole video today. After that, you're going to put it into the other hand, palm facing up, and you're going to crank it forward again. This is just a small motion. Your hand is closed, but not squeezing. Closed so it doesn't come out of your hand. Just pushing over and back. Stomach up and in, abs tight. Tuck your chin a little bit. Always tuck your chin when you're defending yourself. You're gonna come over and back as you do your cane self-defense training at home. Giving you five basic strikes today. I want you to practice over and over again so that they flow so you don't have to think about it so that you can defend yourself using your cane for self-defense. After you do that, about 30 seconds, then I want you to put the cane in front of you and you're gonna continue the warm up with a small squatting motion. This is just to get blood to flow through your legs into the muscle, warm the muscles up, warm up the knees, warm up the ankles. And this one, if you're in a chair and you can, lean forward, allow it to stand you up, sit back down. This is gonna to start to build more power in your legs and you're using your cane to assist you going up and down. If you can't stand up out of the chair, don't stand up, but if you can, do that. Now, using this bag as a target, I'm gonna show you the techniques, but you don't have to have a bag. You can do these in the air. The first one is going to be from this position. You're gonna bring it up like you're holding a sword. Your hand slides down a little bit. Hello, Doug, it's nice to see you. And you're simply going to thrust. Now with the thrust, again, you can do this. I'm gonna turn the chair so you can see. You can be sitting in a chair, and that could be a wheelchair. You could be sitting waiting for the bus. You could be waiting for the plane in the airport. You can bring this through TSA. You have to defend yourself. It's that simple thrusting motion. And I suggest that even if you don't need to be in a chair all the time, that you do some training from a seated position because you never know when you might need it. And you want to be able to have done it. You want to have done it already for cane self-defense training in a chair to know what it feels like. So you can do it standing, you can do it seated, but it's just a simple thrust. So the very first strike for self-defense is to put the cane between you and the threat, stick it through his throat, stick it into his nose, into his teeth, into his eyes, into his solar plexus for self-defense. You're just simply thrusting. Now you're gonna have three things to stop the threat. This is how you stop the threat now. Stop the threat immediately, you're gonna have to extend the arm all the way. Number two, turn your shoulders and hips. You can see that moves the bag more. Number three, step. When you take that step, you accelerate that strike for self-defense. So the first technique, get it up into this position and practice the thrust. Take a step and thrust. You can do this in the air, and if you need to, be seated in a chair. Let me get this back a little bit so you can see. From here, get it up between you and the threat, and thrust. Again, what's most important is not the technique. What's most important is the principle of targeting something you can remove or destroy. His ability to see you, ability to breathe temporarily or permanently, his ability to stand up and breathe, his ability to stand up, striking there. So those are your targets. You're thrusting. Get the other hand up. Turn your shoulders and hips. When you're ready, take a step. Taking that step accelerates it. Number two, the second strike, you're gonna bring it to your same shoulder when it's in your right hand. And I say same shoulder because I want you to do the right hand and then do the left hand or start with the left, do the right. But 
Do them evenly, do them equally. The same amount of training, self-defense training with your cane, power strike with the right, and then when it's in your left, power strike from that left shoulder. Now it's very important that you keep it from your shoulder coming forward so that you can keep your weapon between yourself and the threat. Let's say this is his temple. I'm gonna turn my shoulder and extend the arm and then to get maximum power, take that step. Now you don't have to do it on a bag. If you do it with a stack of tires, you can put a bunch of padding around a pole or a tree or practice it in the air. If you don't have that, step on the strike. If you do it from a sitting, sitting, sitting position, again, I'm gonna have a hard time, like I said, with that the whole way through. You can't take a step or you don't take a step. You're still gonna extend the arm and turn the shoulders and hips. Now, if you like this type of training, this is what I call the gray man option because it can go anywhere you go, especially if you get something like this, the dojo training cane, it's very inexpensive. Have them make it for you in Hickory. The link is below. You can see what they cost. It's not very much, but using this self-defense uh, cane training at home, you just maximize what you have naturally, your strength, your speed, your power, you're becoming stronger. If you like this kind of stuff, give me the thumbs up. Put in the other hand, practice coming from that other shoulder. The third strike, you're just gonna bring it from the other shoulder. Keep the cane between you and the threat. Always come off the shoulder. If this is the threat and I bring it up in the air and not off the shoulder, and he closes the distance, coming in fast, my arm wraps around him. You're not gonna be able to hit him, your arm will hit him, no power. You wanna start on your shoulder, and no matter how close he comes, this is still gonna hit him. It's because it's between here and here. You're coming forward. Always keep the cane between you and the threat when you do self-defense cane training at home with these five basic strikes. Now, the second or third strike is coming off that other shoulder. I like to now, at this point, when you have three techniques, put them together, start with a thrust, come from one shoulder, come from the other shoulder and switch hands immediately. Start with a thrust, come from one shoulder and the other shoulder. The technique's not important as the principle. The principle is what can you remove or destroy? His ability to be awake. You hit him right here with this kind of a cane, then that's gonna knock him out most of the time. If his hands are up, this cane will seek flesh. That means go compress all that flesh. It's gonna seek the bone in there and it's gonna break it from here. For self-defense, right? He's trying to hit you or he's trying to attack you or stab you with something, smash through that hand, comes through, bounces off his head. Maybe he's knocked out and he's unconscious. Uh, Doug says, does hickory or oak have a better grip? It all depends on the finish, Doug. So if you, um, you're gonna finish it probably with the same oil and you're gonna oil it up with Minwax or boiled linseed oil or some other type of mineral oil and those are gonna give you a pretty good grip. You can also, there are other features that you can get where, unlike this cane, this is the Stealth Traveler, the Quantum Stealth Traveler. That's in the links below if you wanna see what this is. This is a much more expensive cane. This is an everyday carry cane with a lot of really cool features like that tooth that rips the skin right off the face for self-defense. And this teardrop shape here, which becomes almost like a dull blade, which will seek bone and compress the flesh even more effectively and cause more damage for self-defense. But this cane has this for that purpose. You can even throw your wrist in there and then you have some of that 550 cord, paracord, however, however you call it, whatever you wanna call it. But it's just, it's very effective. It's very strong too if you needed to take this off and use it. But this is a little bit less of a gray man option, but still most people don't know what this cane is. They don't know this is a self-defense cane specifically. It just looks like a nice gentleman or gentlewoman's cane. But this is below if you want to see what these are. But I like these too. I like to do both. Daniel says, nice cane. Thank you. They're both made by Cane Masters. It's in the link below if you want to see what they're, they cost. All right. So from here, you start to build your combination. Thrust, strike from one side, strike from the other side. Other hand, pick it up. Thrust, coming from one shoulder. The other shoulder, switch hands, pick it up. Thrust, one, two. Turning your shoulders and hips, full extension of the arm, and then when you take that step, accelerate that power to stop them. This is how to stop somebody, stop the threat with these five techniques. Technique number four, I'm gonna have you turn the cane around so that you have the crook coming forward, 
and I'm gonna stick this between his legs and I'm gonna drop him down a little bit. You're gonna drop him down a little bit, right? For self-defense. This is cane self-defense. Right? From here, coming straight up between the leg, or if you miss the middle of his body, the lower part, you're gonna come up and you're gonna hit under the chin, smashing his teeth together, knocking him out for self-defense. Or maybe he's reaching out, trying to strike you with a punch or a knife or a slap or a grab, or he's got a weapon in his hand and your cane comes up and just smashes that bone right there on the bottom. Um, Doug asks if the teardrop lightens the cane very much. And the answer is yes, you're taking off a significant amount of wood and it does lighten the cane. And if you have this made in hickory, Doug, then it's gonna be an extremely strong cane, even though you had it um, shaved down a little bit or you know, however they do that. I'm sure they, they cut that off somehow. But that same technique up between the legs. Now, if you're in that chair, the same technique works. All these techniques works, and you can use two canes. You use one for mobility to get you around. You can lean on it, or you bring the other cane up, bring it through, down on top, thrust through the middle. That just took that off so you can see the teardrop when I hit that. But you just bring that basic motion, bring it up between the legs. You can do this from a uh, sitting position, seated. You can be sitting down, and this still works. It's very effective. And what's happening is your wrist is turning, your forearm is bending, and your upper arm is lifting. So you take those three pivot points, each one of those accelerating, that strike becomes very effective. Now, you don't have to hit a bag. If you don't have a bag, practice that in the air. Get a feel for what that feels like. That's the fourth technique of five techniques to stop the threat. I want you to be able to stop the threat with simple, basic, effective techniques that work. From here, I want you to bring your hand onto the end of the cane, and I want you to step in and thrust for number five, just this big bar of oak coming straight through his nose, his teeth, his throat, into his chest. Maybe if you're sit sitting down, I don't know why I'm having such a hard time saying seated, sitting, it's just a funny thing for me today. But from here, you can snap this up here. He comes in close and you can smash. Now the cool thing about this is if you get this on top of someone's arms and you're pulling down, you're applying all this pressure onto those nerves in the, this is a pressure point technique that you'd find in a lot of martial arts. Let's say he puts his hands on you right here. And I have a student coming in, he must be late. I was hoping he could come in so we could show you what this looks like. We'll see how long we can go if he pops in here in the next few minutes. I'll have him demonstrate it. But let's say his hand goes on you, you bring your cane over here, you take hold of it, and with his arms here, you're gonna pull him down to size, and then you're gonna smash right through his teeth, through his eyes for self-defense. Knock him out, hit him in the fore, uh, forehead or anywhere in the face, it's gonna cause unconsciousness probably for self-defense. So, but you bring it up from here, and then he puts his hands on you. I have a saying when it comes to self-defense here at Quantum, where if he puts his hands on you, you put your hands on him. That means you don't want to wait. You don't want to hesitate until he's choked the life out of you or he's crushed your windpipe that can't be fixed. You want to respond immediately. And if you have this in your hand, you just put it between you and him. And if you have to rip it down his face, that's okay. You put it on those hands and then thrust. So putting these two last two combinations, number four, number five, snatch it up between his legs. I think I had it turning out. By the way, this works either way. You can have the cane here and it snaps up or here and it snaps up. But the last technique is getting it here. Notice how your hand is here, kind of in a power position, a power hold here, and then you just thrust. Now, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe because that helps me grow this channel. Please give me a thumbs up because that helps um, other people see it and share if you would, if you could share this video, that really helps. Uh, Doug asked with spreading the knees, does it make it easier? Yes, I think from this position, I just found the cap. From this position, if your knees are apart, you do have a wider base. So uh, you could be sitting, I don't sit like this that often, uh, just because it's not as comfortable for me with my giant legs. But you could pretty much sit anyway, is my point. 
What I do want you to practice, though, is standing up with your cane. So if you have to defend yourself and you have to strike or he comes and he puts his hands on you and you have to get this cane up and over and pull it down and thrust and thrust this way, then I also want you to be able to practice getting up out of the chair. You might not need to sit in a chair. You might not be in a wheelchair is what I'm saying. Or you might not um, have mobility issues that force you to do most things from a chair. However, we sit all the time, right? You sit in so many places. I even practice different techniques because I carry, I carry this one. This goes with me in my car. And often when I pump gas station in bad neighborhoods, this is the one I get out with. And there's one gas station in particular in uh, a neighborhood close to here, right next to a giant box store that attracts the panhandlers and the aggressive beggars for money. And they will physically get in your space and almost demand that you give them some money. I get out of my car with my cane and I'm standing here pumping the gas, not as a threat, but as a promise that I will defend myself. You have every right to defend yourself too. But you have to, so I practice, this is on the uh, passenger seat, I practice in the car, pull up, put everything in park, reach over, get my cane, put on my lap, open the door, step out with it. And practice those things, because if you, do, if you wait till you need it, you need to do it for real, it, it's not gonna be effective, it's not gonna work for you. So practice a lot of techniques, think about sitting at the park, think about sitting at the bus stations, think about, because you can take this with you everywhere you go. This can go into the bank, this can go into your kid's school, this can go into um, any, any place that's a non-permissive environment for one of these self-defense tools. That's why this is such a great all-around self-defense tool and gray man, gray woman option. Gray man just means that you blend in. If you walk around, let me show you this weapon corner. I got it organized. I'm excited to show somebody. My daughter put that together for me. Just, you know, she loves following instructions and I'm not good at it. But we got them all organized. So everything's nice and neat in there. But if I carry anything in there, they're all effective tools for self-defense, but they all kind of stand out uh, with the exception of the walking sticks. The walking sticks don't stand out as much. Those are also great gray man, gray woman options. But nothing compares to this, especially the way this one is made with this wide crook for self-defense. Um, yeah, uh, Daniel says pew pew. <laughs> exactly, so non-permissive environments. That's what Daniel's talking about. You can't take pew pew into a lot of places. They, I've heard them called freedom seeds. There's a, a local guy where I, I get my freedom seeds delivered to me from the back of his car. It's all legitimate, it's all legal, but he, he just happens to get things that when they're out of stock in other stores, he can, I can get them delivered at, for a really good price. Anyway, those freedom seeds, your, your device, your tool that uses freedom seeds can't go with you into a lot of places, but this can. Can't go on the plane for sure, can't go through TSA, but I see these everywhere in the airport and you can take it. Now you have to be comfortable with that and say, um, you know, and it might not be right for everybody. If it's not right for you, it's not right for you. Walking stick, uh, trekking pole, all of these use a lot of the same techniques. This one has some extremely unique features, especially like something like this. See that first link below if you want to learn more about Cane Masters canes. And that's what these are. And again, so inexpensive. I used to sell um, Carex canes, which is the one that you would get at CVS or at a, um, you get them on Amazon. I sold a lot on Amazon, but they're like $10. This is, I think this is 40 some with a little bit more, but you'll break those other canes in training you'll break 10 or 20 a year. That's what I was going through. And then I got one of these, I've had this now for two years and it's indestructible, just about. As long as you keep it oiled up and you take care of it, every once in a while I'll sand it back down and I'll soak it in some good, I like Minwax. Um, boiled linseed oil is also great. I go back and forth depending on, and it makes it tacky so that it, when you do use it and get it in your hand, as Doug was asking before, it's not coming out of your hands. It gives you just a much more powerful grip and it makes the wood more flexible. If you do get one of those other canes um, that's, that comes with a factory finish, an inexpensive cane, inside under the finish and under the lacquer is dried out wood. It's, it's wood that was kiln dried and it's very inexpensive. That's why it's so cheap. 
But if you sand off and you have to sand a lot to get that paint and the lacquer off, then you can soak it back up and, and get some oil in it. All right, I think we'll see if someone's here in the back door. True story, a giant truck smashed my car back behind the, uh, the, the building the other day and my neighbor was pounding on this door. No, he's not out there. I was hoping the guy would come in so we could show him that technique. Um, but, but so my neighbor, this is something I've been wanting to talk to you about. This is really important uh, for self-defense. So someone's back there just pounding, pounding, pounding on the door. So first lesson, situational awareness. I'm hearing someone pounding the back door. The store next to me over here, they do a lot of cash business and they have a lot of uh, different people from different parts of the community who might want to take some of that cash away from them and i'm thinking because i don't have a peephole and i don't have the camera set up back there yet and i, I don't know who's back there i'm not going to just open the door so that's the first lesson don't just open the door hey who's there why are you pounding on my door but it was my neighbor over here who had watched my truck just get smashed his got smashed last week by the same big pizza company i won't say which is the name by their delivered truck the guy a different driver smashed his truck last week smashed my truck this week a couple days ago Put a big old crease, knocked my uh, rear view mirror off, um, smashed the whole front, the whole side, the whole passenger side from back to front. <laughs> I'm only laughing because it's just stuff, right? That's what the insurance is for. Guy didn't do it on purpose. He wasn't paying attention. He's paying attention to the wrong thing. And he smashed my car. Anyway, second lesson for self-defense. My neighbor comes out and he's understandably angry. He had just seen the driver because his truck was, his, he has a brand new truck too. I have an older truck. His brand new truck was smashed up last week. He sees the driver. He asks him, hey, did that other driver, because it was a different driver, did he get fired for smashing my truck? Uh, and, uh, he didn't know. What, he said, if you go back there, when you drive around, make sure you pay attention on that turn and don't smash the truck that's back there. He said he had just got done telling this guy, the guy this, and the guy smashed into it anyway. So my neighbor is hot and he's hot and he's from New York City, I think, or some, from somewhere up north. There's a lot of people down here from that and they just have a different uh, mannerism, right? They're not Midwestern calm like I am. So he's, he's popping around, he's cussing, he's yelling, he's, I can't believe, he's just hooting. Second lesson, and I, and I said, and he said to me, he said, why are you so calm? And I said, well, it was an accident, he didn't do it. I said, I, t I teach breathing, I could teach you how to breathe and calm down. I said, but more importantly, I work with people who are referred to me because they've been stomped into the ground, literally, this is true, stomped into the ground or gotten themselves arrested for assault and battery because they couldn't control their temper. And this goes back to something that is very important in self-defense. You never know who you're popping off to. You never know who you're yelling and screaming in their face and you're all mad about something that can be fixed with, by a body shop. They're in a big company, big multinational company. They're gonna pay for it. It's gonna be fine. I'm gonna to have to rent a car for a little bit. It's annoying. So what, right? I can lose my temper and scream and yell and get in this guy's face. I don't know what he's going through. I don't know what his triggers are. I don't know if he's carrying a weapon and I'm gonna lose my life or be injured or hurt somebody else and go to jail because of some stuff. And, it's, and when you break it down like that and you think about it, you're just like, oh, of course I wouldn't. You know, I wouldn't get mad and yell and scream and get in a fight just over some broken car. But we do, right? We lose our temper all the time. So that's the lesson. A second self-defense lesson is you don't know what the other person, you don't know who they are. So whether it's road rage, fighting over a parking spot, uh, some perceived uh, slight, you have to learn how to take a deep breath and let it go. Find the right perspective and say, you know what, it's just stuff. Hey, are you okay? You know, I know you didn't do it on purpose. Even if they did do it on purpose, find a way to take a breath and remove yourself. That's the most important part of self-defense, situational awareness. If I didn't pay attention to the situation, I went out and I responded to my neighbor, he's hot, I get hot, now the driver's getting hot, everybody's screaming and yelling and getting into a fisticuffs or getting into a fight, the knife comes out, a gun comes out, all these horrible things, they do happen. And if you think about what's happening right now in our world, tensions are the highest they've been historically in years in decades, right? Maybe even in centuries. People are at their wits end 
and so many people are struggling to pay for food and pay for gas. People are skipping meals. They're not eating as much meat who are all the way on the bottom rung, who are suffering and, and who are struggling. I don't know what his situation is. I don't know if he just got in a fight with his significant other this morning or if he's going through something, he's going through a separation or a divorce. Who knows what they could be going through? So you have to put things in perspective. You have to learn how to breathe and let it go. Yeah, Midwestern nice keeps anger controlled and a person can think. It's not just Midwestern. Doug and I are both long, lifelong martial artists. I, all my clients in Ohio who I taught who had been either in a fight where they got stomped into the ground or they hurt somebody and went to jail and had to pay big fines over it, they, they also were Midwestern. So it has nothing to do with where you live. It has to do with your center and your breathing. That's where the breathing comes in. And you won't be able to breathe if you don't practice it. I teach specific breathing. Maybe you've got some videos on here about how to breathe. But whatever it takes for you to learn how to, if that's an issue for you, it might not be your problem, you know? Um, yeah. Daniel says, a fight avoided is a fight won. Sun Tzu. Love Sun Tzu. When I was in the Marine Corps, I couldn't read enough Sun Tzu. I, I, was, I thought it was my duty. I think it was actually on the Marine Corps reading list. But it was my duty to read Sun Tzu. I love everything he's ever written. He's, you know, he's dead, what, a thousand years ago or whatever. But um, breathe. Learn how to breathe. Learn how to find your center. Learn how to let things go. And learn how to put things in perspective. Because one day you might have to really physically defend yourself or, or your family the people you care about and you want to be you want to have the right mindset and if you're just that raging bull who can't see past the color red you're going to lose anyway you have to learn how to step to the side take a deep breath turn you have to learn you have all the training has to kick in and you won't be able to do that if you're just in a rage rage is not anger doesn't translate into fighting anger or, or self-defense anger and self-defense opposite sides fear Fear and self-defense, they're on the same side. You should be afraid. You should be nervous. You should have a sense that you don't want to hurt yourself, you don't want to hurt the other person. That's good. Then you're going to use that. You're going to breathe through that. You're going to make a decision. You will defend yourself, and then you have to respond to it. But, but don't, get, don't get stuck in the, the, the anger part of it. If you, if, you can't learn, if, and if you need some help with that, please let me know, and I'll make you a video on specifically how I teach how to calm down, how to find your center, how to let things go. It's training. It's like everything else. It's like push-ups. It's not easy. You just get stronger than the push-ups. You learn the techniques. You practice them again and again. They come out of you without even thinking about it. So you can, and that happens to me. When I get into a nerve uh, situation where I'm nervous, upset, angry, afraid, or um, anxious, I think I said that, then my breathing kicks in naturally. Doug will tell you his breathing kicks in naturally. That comes from training. I can train you how to do that. You guys have been awesome. I'll see you in a little bit. Thank you.